Hello people, in this video we want to look at the differences between a case control study and a cohort study. Right, so basically where are we? In epidemiological methods, you know that we have observational studies and experimental studies, two things. Now in observational studies, you have descriptive studies and analytical studies, isn't it? Are you able to see? So in analytical studies, we have what is called as a case control study and a cohort study. The differences between these two we want to look at. So both of these are analytical studies, which is under observational study, which is under epidemiologic method. So what's the difference between a case control study and a cohort study? A case control study, they're also calling it as case reference. Again, here individual is the unit, individuals are units of studies. In cohort, they're also calling it as follow-up study again individuals are unit of study in this okay so this is basic idea of where exactly we are now we want to look at the differences between a case control study and a cohort study so a case control study it proceeds from effect to cause so here uh, you're starting with the disease right you're picking people who have the disease and going backwards to find the cause so that is a case control study. Case control uh, study is backwards. It's a retrospective study. You're starting with the disease. You're picking up people who have the disease and you're asking them if they did something so many years ago that could have led to what they have today. Like if you picked up people who have lung cancer, you can ask them if they were smoking uh, 20 years ago, were they smoking? Were they using some kind of um, uh, smoke emitting stuff? what was their exposure to air pollution etc so you can go and try to find the cause in a case control study it's a backward study retrospective study okay so you start with the disease is that fine guys now in comparison let us look at a cohort study now a cohort study is a forward study it goes from cause to effect <clears throat> the disease has not occurred yet so you are going to pick up some people who are smoking so today these people are smoking, you pick them up and you study them, you follow up them for some 20 years and find out finally how many of these people get the disease. This could be a very negative thing or you find out people who are vaccinated today and find out how many people get the disease or don't get the disease. So you kind of follow up, it's a prospective study, right? So it proceeds from <clears throat> cause to effect, starts with people who are exposed to risk factor or suspected cause. So this case uh, control study, you don't have, we have to wait those 20 years and all that, right? It is immediate. So usually it is the first approach for testing the hypothesis. So what happens at the end of a, at the end of a descriptive study, you will get a hypothesis. Now this hypothesis is incomplete. It's just a clue. So that you want to prove with the help of these analytical studies. Now in the analytical studies, you have case control and cohort. See, case control is kind of quick. You just pick up these disease people, ask them what and all they have done in their life before. And within like uh, a day, you can complete this case control study. So it's one of the first steps in actually finding out this cause, right? Where are we here? So, um, it is usually the first approach to test the hypothesis, but it is also useful for exploratory studies. It involves fewer number of subjects, so you just have to pick up some diseased people and some control also, and very few people you will be able to complete this. It gives quick results, yes, because you are not going the, uh, waiting for 20 years for disease to occur and all the disease has already occurred. Suitable for rare, rare diseases, so what happens in rare diseases, you get only few people, right? So this guy has rare disease, this guy has rare disease. Go and find out what actually these people have done in common that the rare disease could have occurred. Like uh, we have seen examples of all this, isn't it, in case control studies. Like let us say thalidomide uh, tragedy, some people have phocomelia. Now this phocomelia, you will go back and try to trace uh, why it, this happened. So kind of, let us say this is a, uh, this is a rare uh, happening, right? So you can go and find out what co was done commonly that these people got it, right, thalidomide exposure. Some people may have, um, what is this, look at this, wait, bladder cancer, some people have bladder cancer and uh, you picked up a few people and then you found out that artificial sweetener could have been a cause. So you go backwards, you understand, right, and if it is a rare disease, it is easy to uh, do a case control study because a cohort study what will happen with a rare disease you will be waiting for 20 years for this rare disease to occur in cohort study and it may not occur because it is a rare disease it may or may not occur so a cohort study will not work for a rare disease but a case control study works for a rare disease okay
Yes, basic concept are you understanding in a cohort study, case control study? Okay. Then where are we here? Generally yields only estimate of RR, odds ratio. So basically in a case control study, you will get what is called as an odds ratio. Basically it is not as perfect as a relative risk and that you get in a cohort study. In a cohort study, you will get a relative risk because you have the incidences. But here in case control study, you will only get an odds ratio, the odds of something happening. How's it going people? Is the noise better now? Noise reduced? Okay. Now, uh, so in this one, what you will get is uh, in a case control study, you don't get a proper value. That is a bad thing, right? In case control study, you don't get a relative risk. You only get an odds ratio. They, are, they don't seem to be very happy with an odds ratio. Okay, these people. Um, this one, um, this one, incidence rates you will get. So new, new incidences are occurring. You are tracking them. So relative risk as well as attributable risk, both you will get in uh, an or uh, in a cohort study. Basically, cohort is a group of people or somebody who are, whom you are studying. Okay, cohort is a group of people whom you are study, studying. So, cohort is a group of people. They are perfectly fine, but they are exposed to some risk factor you think may cause the disease. So, later on, you have to keep following. You have to see if they get the disease. It's a very bad thing. You're going to allow them to be exposed to something and see if they get the disease. And it could be other ways also, right? You can see whether they are vaccinated and they don't get the disease. Both the ways. It can be a nice thing also. And this one, case control study, you're studying cases. That means cases. Cases means what? Diseases. So, these people are, see, backwards. Case control study. This is cohort study. You got it, right? Okay. Where are we? Let's uh, go down. So, we were telling you about this uh, relative risk and uh, uh, attributable risk and uh, here your odds ratio. You remember all the formula? See, odds ratio is the odds that a person will get the disease if they smoke, etc. This is A into D divided by B into C. A into D divided by B into C. This is cross product ratio or uh, odds ratio. Okay. So, you conclude. They, here they got 8 as the odds ratio. Right. So, what does that mean? It means to say that uh, eight times, uh, eight point one times risk is there for smokers compared to non-smokers that they'll get lung cancer. This is the strength of association. Okay, this is chance or likelihood of something happening or being the case. This is not exact relative relative risk. In cohort study, what will you get? Incidences, right? So in cohort study, you will get incidences. So you will get relative risk as well as attributable risk. Then what is that? Let us look at that. Relative risk is you will take the incidence among the exposed. Where is the marker here? Incidence among exposed divided by incidence among not exposed. This is 10. 10 is relative risk. This is a very uh, good value. They seem to like relative risk more. Okay. So this is incidence among exposed divided by inc incidence among not exposed. And this is relative risk. And attributable risk also you should know it is potential for the prevention. So how much of the disease you can prevent? At least this much exposed people if you had controlled, they, if they had not smoked, at least that much of the disease could have been eliminated. People who didn't smoke also got that you can't avoid. But people who smoked and got this part of it, A, this part of it can be eliminated. Right? So this is the attributable risk, the preventable part. Incidence among exposed minus incidence among not exposed divided by incidence among exposed into 100 will give you attributable risk. Here it's 90%. 90% of the cases you can prevent. 10% you can't do much. That's what is attributable risk. So they seem to like cohort study a lot but it is not uh, as uh, uh, quick as case control study. Cohort study will need a lot of follow-up and all that because uh, you have to spend a lot of time and money and all because you have to wait for the disease to occur and all right. You have to keep following these people. They have to cooperate with you and all. Okay, so here they have written cohort study is expensive and here what happens, you are starting with the exposure, right, and you are following up these people for a long time and probably this guy will get lung cancer, probably this guy will get some esophageal cancer, probably something else. So, multiple outcomes you can study in cohort study, right. What happens in... Uh, case control study. You have a disease and possibly you can identify multiple exposures. Here multiple exposures you can find out. But here you can find out multiple outcomes in cohort study. See here it's written cannot yield information about diseases other than this one that is selected for the study. So disease is fixed here. So you will not get information of about other diseases. But here you are starting with the exposure so you can land up with study multiple diseases. But here you can at least get multiple causes, right? Yeah. So guys, um, in which one will there be memory bias? 
recall bias because this is memory right the person has to recollect what they did some years ago so this one will have memory bias case control study will have memory bias how is it going people which one will have memory bias case control that will not be there in what in cohort study that will not be there see this cohort study right there is something that you should know like attrition today you will start with three people and keep following up then two people then one person what and all can happen then allowable attrition rate and all is there how many people can drop off from this cohort study so basically cohort study less than 5% people should leave the study okay then here you have something called as a hawthorn hawthorn bias not able to write it wait hawthorn bias means people can change their change their behavior people may change their habits so their outcome may be different right they can improve themselves or even deteriorate themselves so this is a hawthorn bias that you find in cohort study in case control study what and all biases are there that you have seen right in case control study you already saw there can be a recall bias people cannot recall then there can be a confounding uh, bias then there can be an interviewer bias selection bias of the people that you selected itself there can be burkinsonian bias because you're selecting diseases here from, let us say from a hospital so that can have a burkinsonian bias so so many types of bias are there in case control study that we have already looked at in the case control study video so guys you remember this these are the all the <clears throat> biases in case control study in cohort study you can ha have hawthorn bias okay and this has some ethical issues cohort study can have ethical issues because you're waiting for the disease to occur instead of correcting the person you feel that disease may occur what is that right it has ethical issues so guys in this video we have looked at the differences between case control study and cohort study basically case control study is backwards and cohort studies is forwards in case control study you start with diseases and you look for what possible exposure they have had and in cohort study you start with exposure and you wait for the disease to occur right so this is cohort study which is forward and this is a case control study which is backward this one is a retrospective study this one is a prospective study this case control study is cheap cohort study is expensive but it is more accurate because you get relative risk etc etc you can study multiple outcomes with cohort study and uh, but case control study is really the first step kind of a thing and it is very quick right there is no re uh, there, but here there can be recall bias etc what do you think is good guys you decide if you have a lot of time money go for cohort study if you have no time money you can go for case control study that's all for now in this video bye bye guys there is a retrospective cohort study also which they are uh, like kind of going backwards like if a person has an occupational lung disease you go and check what exposure he had and remaining people probably you can monitor for whether the disease will occur or not something like this is a retrospective cohort study guys there is a retrospective cohort study then uh, there is a mixed cohort study also where they have prospective and retrospective so again from here they will continue and continue monitoring this for some more years okay that will become a retro, uh, mixed cohort study what you are seeing here this is a retrospective this is a retrospective study cohort study and then this one is a mixed cohort study this is uh, still cohort because you see they are coming forward at this point of time and this is definitely a prospective cohort study so as this is retrospective plus prospective they have a mixed cohort study also so in ret in cohort study also you have some amount which can be retrospective but essentially it is a prospective study okay some amount may be retrospective